And so it's perfect. So welcome to the Lower Russian River Municipal Advisory Council's uh, Standing Committee for Land Use. And we will begin with a call to order at 5.30 and move into the Pledge of Allegiance. Yay. Pledge of Allegiance Pledge to the flag, flag of the United, of the United States, States of America, America and to the Republic, Republic for which it stands, stands one nation stands under God, indivisible, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. for all. And now a roll call. Uh, Nick Pereira, are you are you present? Here. Okay, Kyra Wink, Chair, are you here? I am present. Excellent. Mike Nichols, are you present? Present. I shall turn it over to you, Kyra. All right. I was, hang on one second. I need to turn my sound up because I wasn't hearing people very well. All right. Welcome, everybody. Um, welcome from Arizona. I am wintering this month in Arizona. So the background you see is my little rig. Um, approval of agenda is our first order of business. So we have an agenda that was sent out. We've got a couple permits to start out with and then our updates. Any other comments or concerns about our agenda? Mike, you're muted. Mike, I see your mouth. I said I move the agenda as, as uh, presented. Second. Okay, shall we take a roll call vote? Yep. Hey, uh, uh, Nick, are you in favor of uh, the agenda? Aye. Okay, Mike Nichols? Aye. Kyra? Aye. Excellent, that passes unanimously. Okay. Any statement of conflict of interest? Anybody have any conflicts of interest that need to be noted? I'll take that as a no from everybody. Correspondence, Mary, any correspondence? We do not have any correspondence. All right, consent calendar, approval of minutes from our November 27th meeting. I move the consent. Second. And a roll call vote for the uh, consent calendar. Uh, Nick, are you in favor? Aye. Mike Nichols, are you in favor? Aye. Kyra Wink, are you in favor? Aye. That passes unanimous unanimously. Okay, um, before we get into um, our review of the permits and projects and our calendar items, I just want to make one comment. Um, until I get total clarification, I think I have clarification, but I just want to say to any people, uh, if there's any Lower Russian River Municipal Advisory Committee members that, that are listening in on this meeting, and I haven't looked yet, um, you are able to listen in, but you are not able to comment within public comment. We, we, we can bring that discussion to the MAC meeting for comments. Um, it was pointed out to me that that may be in violation of the Brown Act. So I just wanna make that announcement for now and we'll seek clarification um, if there's any questions on it. All right, so permits and projects of interest. Um, we had a couple permits um, that are bike races we have the King Ridge um, Supreme Bike Race and the Grand Fondo. The King Ridge is coming up on March 27th with the Grand Fondo coming up on April 23rd. Um, Austin, are you here from uh, or supporting the King Ridge bicycle? Yes, King Ridge along with Miguel. Oh, thank you the both. Oh, here's Miguel, I see you down there, Miguel. Thank you very much. Thank you both for attending this. I know that there were some, there was quite a bit of discussion at the coastal uh, land use meeting uh, regarding this bike race and some concerns and questions that were brought up. Some of which I kind of summarized and sent to Miguel um, for his comment and asked him to join us today because, um, you know, to address some of the current concerns and comments that came up. And um, I, what I'll do is I will just 
should we go over Miguel, why don't you give a quick overview of your race, where it goes and all uh, Yeah, that. thank you. Um, yeah, so I'd like to just to speak to not just specific to the event, but the history of it and, and, and who I am in the background, just so you understand this. Um, and it's an event of a maximum of 500 people. It's not five to 7,000 like the Grand Fondo. So I grew up in Sebastopol, where I live now. I've been a teacher for 27 years. I teach at West County. I taught at El Molino for 18 years. So I started a mountain bike club. Part of that was in Tamales and in, uh, and in, and in West Marin. Um, and then I lived in Oxnell for a long time where I met my wife. So she was raised there. So I have raising three kids here in, in West County. Um, so I'm not popping in to exploit uh, the wonders of West County for my personal gains. This um, cycling event, the Grasshoppers, this will be our 25th year. We started out as a small group ride out of Occidental, out of Tom Ganella's bike shop. And as it got bigger and more popular, we, I realized the need for safety measures. So we started working with the county and getting emergency services and getting permitted as it got bigger, working with the CHP and, and, and doing whatever it is that we were asked to do. And uh, that's been kind of a meeting, a moving target with the PRMD, um, in, including up to now. And, and I think they're trying to, and I'd like to also say that what they've created with you guys advising, I, I think that's a fantastic thing. Um, we hold dear our, our small communities and uh, it's important that we're able to have input and, and see what's going on. Um, so as the events have grown, um, it's become, you know, a business for me. It's become a lot of work. It's become very expensive to put on. Um, and we, as we've grown, we've been looking for beneficiaries for this. Uh, as an example, um, we've always helped support the local mountain bike team and other high schools uh, groups. Uh, a scholarship foundation to a student of mine who passed away is one of the recipients. Uh, the event in Calusa we have for a woman who has a foundation for families living with cancer. And with this one, my goal in, in putting on this event, and this is, you know, indulge me but with the long story, is as a teacher at high school at El Molino, I've been frustrated hearing from my students, especially in the Russian River and Casadero area, and being good friends with Tom Ganella that just can't even afford to go into firefighting. And I've been aware of the big events four or 5,000 people with very little being done to actually support the, the foundations, the firefight they are. So my goal in putting on this event, and I talked to Austin, I said, let's give another shot doing one in Sonoma County. It's really stressful, it's very hard, it's very expensive, but this matters to me. So we're working with uh, Jackie Jorgensen who started the Firefighters Foundation. And she's already reached out to all the chiefs with Baxman and up through Casadero and let them know that this a portion of the proceeds are going to that. So. In terms of, of who it's benefiting, it's that, as well as the local club. Um, it's happening, starting in Duncan's Mills. I've long known Pat Parks, who owns Gold Coast. And then Lisa Switzer, her son, Reed, uh, was my student on my mountain bike team. And so we park behind her part and have permission there. Um, and so for this event, a lot of thought went into some of the concerns you have, which then I articulated what we've done, and that's safety. Um, and on the road and, and as being as little impactful as possible. Um, but before I go into that, I, I'd like to mention, and, and, I, and I know this isn't uncommon for the river, but other parts of West Sonoma County is that oftentimes cyclists are seen as other and not a viable form of tourism. And if we have four or 500 people coming in, I know lots of people that travel long distances that stay at inns, that spend the weekend, that are at the Airbnb. So this is a vibrant form of tourism. It's not something simply just to be tolerated. I think small events like this uh, that are based out of that area, people are staying at Cassini's, people are staying at the inn in Occidental, et cetera, like ours, it needs to be differentiated from something like the Ironman that comes from what other country? Um, or an event that starts in Windsor, Santa Rosa and passes through and has 5,000 people. Yes. So Miguel, I, I'm gonna to try to focus you on the details of the race. Okay, Thank okay you I'll get into that. A little bit of the background, I appreciate okay. that. But so the details of this in terms of the safety. So uh, what we've done to mitigate traffic is that it's not, and, and safety, it's not one big timed loop. So if you look at our map, riders start in Duncan's Mills and from Monterio, there's a time sequence from Monterio to Occidental up Coleman Valley and down Willow Creek Road. Um, we have CHPs at, at the spots, which 
um, I won't name where they are, but you can see them on the list of things. Then from that point, uh, they ride on their own. There's no time segments. The, the groups all split apart. They're unlikely to be in groups bigger than two to 10 for the rest of the day. Um, they, we have a restrooms in Duncan's Mills where we start and where they go again to, to hydrate and do that. And then they proceed out to King Ridge where we'll have, we agreed with in speaking to the county in Austin about having a rest stop at King Ridge up there in Tin Barn. And then they go out to uh, Tin Barn Road. Are you guys getting tired just listening to this loop? They got the Tin Barn to Skaggs to Highway 1. Uh, then the next time segment is at Cruz Ranch Road where we'll also have a CHP. And so that time segment is uphill. Again, they're really small number of people riding. Uh, they know how to ride very close to the road and, and single file when, whenever necessary and whenever possible. And then the last time session is the top of Fort Ross, after which they proceed down Myers Grade into Duncan's Mills for, for lunch. And, and, and that's our route. All right, thank you. Um, so some of the concerns that were brought up um, that I articulated to you, Miguel, mm -hmm. um, the, number one was impacts to the area should always be considered. Large amounts of bicyclists would severely impact travel. You mentioned that there's gonna be, uh, it will not be a mass start. There um, you know, will be time starts going out. Um, no more than 400 total riders. They'll be dispersed by the time they reach highway one throughout the remainder of the ride. The group um, doing the small loop will not be on Bohemian Highway or Willow Creek, but ride via 116 and Austin Creek Road. Um, you stated that you're contracting with uh, CHP to provide assistance at the key intersections at which they have jurisdiction. Um, and you went into those um, intersections. The con second concern was safety is a huge concern. Our, our county roads are very narrow where there's only two lane roads and more narrow in some spots. Um, and again, you, you referenced your mass start in two time segments. Um, the rules are that they have to be single file and follow the road safety rules. Um, not all, concern three was not all fire EMT agencies would be notified in a timely manner. CAS, Timber Cove, and all along the coast are not, not notified, and that's the most critical areas for possible accidents. You said mitigation. We are contracting a private EMS service to provide first response if needed and are not seeking the support involvement of local fire departments. However, we will be sure to notify all relevant first responders of the event, and we're also making a contribution to the uh, Volunteer Fire Foundation. Uh, CHP patrol assist at locations detailed under mitigation measures to above. Um, not enough porta potties along the route. Salt, uh, Salt Point State Park is 40 miles from Jenner, no bathrooms. Um, you said you appreciated that concern and will pay for a porta potty to be provided at the rest stop atop King Ridge Road, which is mile 46. The first rest stop is in Duncan Mills where we have a portable restroom as well. Um, and as your standard practice, our course marshals ride at the back of the pack and pick up any accidentally dropped items from the participants. We also rely on the suite vehicle to pick up any items that they see and to remove any course markings and hazards that they encounter. However, our staff do not remove items that are obviously not dropped by our participants, i.e. beer bottles, cans, and other trash along the roadways. So at this point, I'd like to open it up to the land use committee members for any questions, and then we'll open it up to the public. Mike. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Chair Wink. I, uh, I have a couple of questions uh, regarding, first of all, the contribution that will be made to the Volunteer Firefighters Foundation. Uh, I noted in your uh, uh, comments that uh, a donation would be made. However, there is no percentage or disclosure in the application as to how much of the uh, the registration fees would be designated for the foundation after expenses. Uh, in the event of the Levi Leppenheimer race uh, in their application, which we will be discussing in a few minutes, they are stating that their application will donate approximately $100,000. So. 
uh, that I'm unclear as to how much will be actually designated uh, to the Volunteer Firefighters Foundation. Secondly, um, we, we talk about CHP uh, uh, monitoring key intersections on state highways within their jurisdiction. My concern is that on county roads, has the Sheriff's Department been notified and will the Sheriff's Department be actively uh, monitoring the progress on our very narrow county roads. I'm concerned primarily about uh, uh, King Ridge. In many places, King Ridge is 15 to 18 feet wide going up the grade. And many times we don't have cyclists drafting in the past. They are going up in pairs and they're talking going up. My concern is that we still have commerce uh, agrarian commerce uh, occurring even on a Sunday where uh, ranchers and livestock and hay and what have you. And my concern is that a truck could be coming down the highway and an, uh, down King Ridge, which is not a highway and uh, potential for accidents is, is uh, really a matter of grave, grave concern. Um, you mentioned that uh, you have an EMS uh, service, that's great. And I, I applaud you for that, that's uh, vitally important, but we've got a 93 mile route. And if your EMP people are down on Coleman Valley and you have a, an accident requiring EMT help from one of our local volunteer firefighter agencies, uh, how will they be reimbursed? In other words, if we have a, a critical situation requiring EMT uh, assistance in either Timber Cove, Fort Ross or Casadero and your uh, your uh, EMT service that you've contracted with is deployed elsewhere, will the local fire departments be reimbursed for their services? And uh, let's see. That's a lot of questions. Maybe. Well, I know, I know, but I, 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 I have to ask the questions because okay. the questions my constituents have asked me to uh, okay. parlay. And the last question uh, is that our concern, obviously, is with one porta potty at Duncan's Mills, and you've got a 93 mile route. We don't have one. There's multiple. There are. There will be. It was. It was not a disclosed in the application. That's why I'm asking the oh. question. Oh, okay. The application stated that the uh, there would be one porta potty at Duncan's Mills, and there was no disclosure as to any other porta potties along the route. And that concludes my question. So, if you could follow back with some answers, yeah. I'd appreciate it. Thank you. Let me work in reverse order because the porta potties, I don't remember. You, it depends on our numbers, like the one we have for this weekend with 500 people, I just ordered 15. So generally it's 50 around per person. So the number, I don't know how many are, are, are coming. So we will we will have a number that, that meets the needs uh, throughout a day for that. So I would say anywhere between 10 to 15. Is the constructive placement of the porta potties along the route or solely at Duncan's Mills? That would be at Duncan's Mills, and then we would have one at, at uh, King Ridge and, and Tin Barn would be the spot. So they'd be at that one spot twice, and then King Ridge, and then it's up to the participants. There's a few, there's a couple of state parks to pop in. There's a public restroom at the at the store out there. Um, I think with the route and the timing, that that seems that's sufficient from our from our past experiences. Uh, Miguel, can can you want to let me speak to a couple of these points? Uh, that would be great. Go for it. I, um, and hello, Austin McInerney, um, a 12 year resident on East Austin Creek Road in Casadero. Um, I get it. Um, I, you know, I've ridden up Kings Ridge a million times. You literally pull out of my driveway and turn left and you ride up onto Kings Ridge. Um, I've been working with Miguel helping write the permits. And so, first of all, appreciate the opportunity to speak to you. Um, we were not aware that this group existed and we're not informed by the county that this committee existed and we would have been happy to come and present earlier if we knew that this group even existed. So I just want people to realize that we followed the requirements of Sonoma County in doing the permits. And so we apologize that we came to be aware of this group really late in the process. We submitted our application in December uh, and then just learned about this two days ago, you know, and so, so this is a little bit late and I apologize for that. Now, with that said, we've completed the applications. Um, we have the permit approval from Highway Patrol. 
uh, and are awaiting Caltrans. Uh, we just gave them all the information. They won't review until they have the CHP permit. So we're following all the steps uh, that are required. Now, if there are additional requirements that you and others believe should happen, that's really with the county. Um, but we're doing what's been required of us. And there is no numbers of porta potties uh, stipulated per number of participants. So we just work with the service provider to get the total number. And I apologize that in the application, we didn't specify an exact number, but as Miguel uh, indicated, we will contract for the number uh, based on the total number of registrants for the event. And, and that's not known yet. Um, you know, we're still in registration process. So in addition to where we put porta potties, there are obviously public restrooms along the route. Uh, there's a restroom in Casadero up by the tennis courts. That's a known spot. People stop along the ride. So there are other spots um, that people will frequent to help with that. And to, and, and to speak to the other questions um, uh, that Mike raised, you know, the, the exact amount of donation um, granted, you know, hundred thousand dollars from Levi's events, is a lot of money, but then they have thousands of participants that's an order of magnitude bigger than this event. So we cannot match that kind of contribution. We're looking at three to 400 riders at the most 500. Our events a lot more affordable than that event. So we have to look at, we have to decide what amount can be given after we pay all the expenses of the event and see what the leftover is. So I'd let Miguel speak to what percentage he's comfortable as the owner um, but at this point, you know, it, it, we got to see what the total cost of the event was. So if it's in the hundreds of dollars or if it's a thousand dollars, I'd like to think it's a couple thousand dollars is probably what we'll be able to afford. But Migs can speak to that. Um, second question around the Kings Ridge, the route, um, the concerns about traffic on it. Yes, it is narrow in some places. We are very strict about uh, uh, telling riders to abide by the rules, stay to the right, stay single file in sections where there isn't a long view of sight line. Um, we have a number of marshals that ride within the, the route to enforce those rules and to uh, call out and to actually disqualify riders and ban them from future events if they're riding recklessly or if they do something that our marshals see that we think jeopardizes safety uh, of everyone involved. And so we take that very seriously. Um, and again, the, this is not a mass start event. People roll out from the start anytime they want between nine and 10, and then there's only those time segments. So we foresee smaller groups actually on course at any one time and in, in locations. And that will, you know, obviously uh, decrease the amount of, uh, of traffic on, on the road in any one place. And this, this, this event has two routes and they, they just, they go out at different times. So the total volume of riders at one location at one time, it won't be that different than a, on a good weather day that, you, that the amount of traffic that you see riding on that road, which has become very popular over the years. I just don't see that. And having ridden up there over many, many weekends, you know, it is a popular place to go. And I, I think our event, it'll be, you know, marginally different at some times. And then the last, you, you asked about the EMS services. Yes, we are contracting with a, a private provider, um, but we, if in case, and then Miguel mentioned, he's been doing these events for 25 years. There's been four events or four episodes that required EMS response in those 25 years. So the likelihood of having a medical emergency that requires EMS response is very low. And if, in, if it does happen, and a volunteer fire department is dispatched, then I, and I, I asked Mig to clarify this, but I believe we would be more than happy to reimburse for the cost at that time if it happens and it's not our already paid EMS provider responding. Most of the injuries that we see are minor scrapes and abrasions that a rider doesn't call 911 for, they continue riding they clean themselves up when they get to the finish line or they come to the rest stop and our rest stops do have some basic first aid supplies. So someone can clean themselves up and do a light bandage if they need it. But that again is extremely rare. We just haven't seen it in 25 years of running these events. So um, I hope that addresses the, the concerns you've asked Mike uh, or at least provides a little clarity on them. 
Thank you, Mr. McInerney. I, uh, I appreciate your, your comments and uh, I wasn't inferring and I hope I didn't uh, think that, uh, hope you didn't think that I was inferring that I was, we were expecting $100,000 uh, uh, to be donated to the uh, nonprofit. Uh, my question basically was revolving about what percentage of the total take, you know, after minus expenses. Yeah, and Mig can speak to that. What, what, and what so I, I wanted was... to just clarify that point. And then I appreciate your your uh, uh, comment about the fire districts. Uh, and that that's important because uh, our fire districts are operating on a shoestring, as you well know. You live in Casadero, I live in Casadero, and we know what the situation is. Um, uh, has they, do we know if the county sheriff's department has been notified and if they will be uh, aiding on some of these other? Yeah, I apologize for overlooking that question. So as part of the requirements to apply for the county, they send the information out about this event to all departments, including the sheriff. So they have been notified that the event's happening. As our practice, too, we reach out to the uh, police and emergency services prior to the event to remind them of it coming up. Um, and so we, we make that notice. We don't contract sheriffs to be on course, but we are contracted for CHP at those state highway intersections. So with our own marshal services and with the notification that we give to the county, um, that's worked in the past. Um, this event has been permitted by the county in prior years and the county sheriff has been fine with the approach that we've taken. Understood as a ministerial point, we understand that. Um, and I, I'm assuming, uh, Chair Wick, that uh, there's, Wink, is there going to be someone reviewing the Q&A and then asking those questions? Okay, very good. I think that concludes uh, my uh, questions at this point, uh, moving on to... Uh, I did want to answer your question. You asked about what I what I did at HuffMaster for this foundation that worked for us was 10% um, after everything's paid for. And, and for them, it ended up being, I don't know, $2,500. So again, think at the end of the day, we're making 20 grand as opposed to Levi's several million. And I have to scratch my head and I don't know, you don't have to respond this, but I it baffles me. Well, for, I apologize for you guys and for us as Austin mentioned that we didn't know about this committee nor are we asked to participate with the advisory cycling clubs about this new process so i was i was pretty frustrated by that to be at last minute um anyways that's what we normally do and um yeah i'm sorry that, i think that was the main thing i wanted to speak miguel to. and austin and then i'm gonna take questions from nick i just want to state that the land use committee was just formed last year at the end of the year so we're a relatively new committee of the Lower Russian River Municipal Advisory Committee, which was formed by Linda Hopkins in her large fifth district area. Okay. And, and our purpose is simply to get the word out to the community about events and permits that are coming out from Permit Sonoma, because as you imagine, Permit Sonoma is a large uh, um, department and they're not good about getting out information to people and so that the community has a right to respond and ask questions in the county process and and there wasn't a lot of information coming out from the county and one of Linda Hopkins um, pledges to her community was to make sure they were aware of what was going on in the community and have input to that so that's what this is about I didn't hear about your permit until right before I called you um, and wanted to give you guys the opportunity to explain it to the community because the community does have an open, open comment period, which will end on the 28th to get back to the permit people to say, we don't like this or we're fine with it or whatever. All right. Okay, Nick. Go off of mute. Yeah, thanks. Um, uh, I just want to know what are you guys doing differently this time to handle the trash and leftover signage than you have in past years? Because in the past years, it's just not been adequate. Um, we've got, I have many questions. And then what are you defining as your trash? Are you marking all the trash that's going out? How are you defining what is yours and what is not yours? Well, uh, Meg, I, I'm happy to speak to this. Um, we do not use 
course markings that you're familiar with. There aren't signs put up on post. We give the route in a computer file. We ask all our riders to download that and follow it. We do a pretty extensive course briefing with everyone um, so they know the route. If we do, I mean, obviously there are some air intersections where the CHP is going to be there. So that's very clearly marked and then their cars leave and that's the end of it. Um, we may, depending, um, and Miguel, this is up to Miguel, use chalk with an arrow um, on the street with the chalk markings, which then will obviously go away with a little bit of water. So that's the end of it. There's no signage put up on trees or postings put up. Um, and then, as we said in the, the trash cleanup, we have sweeps and, and a car that's following on the back end. And so what we see as our trash is obviously sports nutrition wrappers, that the kinds of things that cyclists are, are ingesting while they're riding, we'll pick those up. Um, and then at the rest stops, they will look around, obviously they're managing the, the materials there within their control. And while they're there, if there is other trash that happens to be where they set up, they will pick it up and clean up because they're there for some time and they wanna leave the spot cleaner than when they found it. Um, however, on the route, we're not gonna pick up, you know, tires or big things. We just can't possibly do that. Stuff that clearly didn't fall off one of our riders, but had been illegally dumped by someone it's outside of our purview and capacity to manage. Um, so anything I want to add onto that, Miguel? Well, I, first of all, what, we, what we're allowed to do with the county is to use water-based markers. Um, if the weather's wet, then we'll put posts in the ground with arrows. Um, that's how the coast is marked. I do need to respond to Nick's comment about in the past. So apparently we've been judged by something in the past. I've been the one putting these on forever. When we used to do old Casadero, I would ride afterwards and pick up water bottles and garbage. Uh, we got raked over the coals one year for one event. Um, and I'll speak specifically to that. This was Facebook, you know, everyone loves that so much. We finished at the bridge on East Austin Creek. I was there, I had to pack everything up, put it in a nice pile and go to Duncan's Mills for a while. And in between coming back, somebody had got in and taken what food was left over, dumped garbage all over. The neighbors took photos of it, talked a ton of shit about us, that it was someone else that came and did that. We have never left garbage or anything during any of our events. So I'm not sure to what one is speaking, but. Um, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll interrupt you here, Miguel, and say I run Old Cash Road regularly. I'm mm -hmm. a triathlete and mm -hmm. a, a obstacle course racer. And I've come by, you know, in the last 10 years, I've come behind your races and seen lots of goo packs and things that are left on the side of the road that you guys aren't cleaning up. And as a runner, I see these a little more closely than your cyclists do. So I'm just, this is my experience. I live, you know, I live here too. And this is what I've witnessed from, you know, from your, you know, races up over old Kaz and on, uh, uh, over in that area so okay. well i apologize i missed things and it, sometimes it takes me again i'm a teacher so sometimes it takes me till the rides on a, on a saturday it takes me till a monday or tuesday or the next weekend so i've always gone back so if i've missed things uh apologies again as austin mentioned we'll, we'll always look out for those wrappers and um it, it annoys us to no end when they do do that it's incredibly disrespectful thing to do and we will of course keep an extra eye uh, out on that and those wrappers happen from rapper writers um Anyways, we know, yes, anyways, I don't want to go on, but I, we will look after it even better. Well, and, and to be specific, one thing that we're doing new this year is having marshals ride within the, the, the group. Uh, and those marshals, part of their job is to stop and clean up as they go along and to the best of their ability. And so that is something that's new that with the marshals um, from the past. So uh, we'll, we're, we're hoping that that helps reduce some litter. Um, you know, there are other riders out there too, as Meg points out. So we'll do the best we can on that. You can't guarantee that 100% of everything, small little pieces of a wrapper, they, some things may get out there, but we'll do the best that we can to, to minimize that and to try to pick it all up. Okay, before I go to the questions, Mike, did you have one more question? Just one quick question. Uh, I did not note in the application that there were going to be timed portions within the race or within the uh, 
the, the event. And timed portions indicate to me that there's a race going on rather than a, a ride, if you will. And I think that uh, I would strongly urge you in future applications, if there is going to be a timed event, it has to be disclosed because uh, that in the future may disqualify ministerial permit and require uh, a normal permitting. Per, uh, perhaps, but I know that there's prizes for every one of Levi Grand Fondo's edition. It's timed from start to finish. Um, and so maybe they're getting ixnate on this as well, because even if you had a thousand sheriffs, you're not going to keep people single file with 7,000 people. So um, I, I do appreciate you pointing that out. And, and maybe that is a concern and that prevents us, our business from working in Sonoma County. Um, and this is kind of a test this year, to be honest, that can this small business function in this climate and, and environment? We think that it's a great event and brings a lot. Uh, it may turn out that there's so many questions and concerns and restrictions that we're only in Mendocino County. So, um, well, and Calusa and Glenn. Yeah, um, <laughs> it's not, you're, all your concerns are valid, but it, I, I, I thought that it was clear in terms of the format. So maybe Austin, we could look at that and see if there was somehow that that would have not caught their eye. And it, we should have that be transparent so people that review it can look at it. Okay, any other questions from Mike or Nick? If not, I'm going to go to the questions that have been submitted. Um, Brian Lewitz says, how are the organizers working with the state parks to protect Willow Creek and its sensitive, sensitive, sensitive ecology? Well, I'm happy to speak to that. As um, you all know, Willow Creek's gone through um, quite a bit of work over the years and it was a county road. I mean, when I first moved into Casadero, it was open for vehicular traffic and it was only some years later that it was actually closed, but it is still a viable county road or route and it's open for public access. It is not in state parks, it's a county. So we're following the county requirements uh, and um, now what we're doing is sending a, a you know, relatively small number of people dispersed downhill on that road, um, which is just recently been upgraded on the lower reaches considerably and paved. So uh, the drainage that has been, and we've heard from the hydrologists that worked on the project, it's been designed now to minimize runoff uh, to protect the stream. So we just feel like that the number of cyclists that are gonna go on the road is not a significant impact um, and, and we're meeting the requirements that, that the county has laid out. Now, if there is additional requirements that state parks has, we have not been made aware of them. Gary, you're still on mute. Thank you. <laughs> Um, I'm going to come back to Natalie Rob Wilder, who has her hand up. Um, she asked some questions and asked if she could ask them in public comment. Um, there was another um, one written in the question period from Carol. It says, I share the concern about any group riding on Willow Creek. How many riders do you expect to ride the Willow Creek loop? Would you still intend to use that road in case of wet weather? How would you get emergency vehicles into the unpaved section of Willow Creek? Well, in terms of total number, uh, it's to be decided. I mean, based on registration, we're guessing maybe half to three quarters of the riot, total riders would be interested in the long route. So 250, 300 at the outside would, would go down that um, route, um, you know, which is at most 30 minutes from top to when they would hit Highway 1. So it's not a, a long-term uh, exposure in that area. Uh, if there was the need for a, a medical evacuation, um, a, a vehicle can get up there. There's a gate on either end that is open uh, or can be opened by EMS. Um, and we don't foresee that. Ha We've never had that experience before on one of our rides. So um, the riders use a lot of caution. Um, that no one wants to get hurt. Uh, and so, you know, people are going to take it carefully. We're going to have marshals there monitoring uh, and, and responding if, if needed. 
Um, and, and the likelihood of someone being hurt so badly that they can't actually get themselves out is just minimal in our experience. Um, doesn't mean it can't happen, but we know that th it is accessible by EMS if needed. Um, All right. Anything? So um, can we um, go to Natalie Rob Wilder, who has her hand up, and then Scott Farmer. Police, are you there? And can you unmute them? Or Mary. OK, Mary or Elise, are you there? Yes, I'm there. Who was the first one, Kyra? Uh, Natalie Rob Wilder. All right, let me fix her. I've got, I've got him unmuted. Okay, thank you. Actually, this is Suki on Natalie's iPad. Sorry about that, Suki Rob Wilder. First, I want to compliment the organizers of this uh, event. I think this is just the kind of tourist event that we need in our area, and I think that uh, I think it's going to go well, especially with the kinds of questions you've been fielding here. I want to particularly compliment you on the uh, COVID requirements that you're putting out for your riders. Um, I'd like to suggest they go a little bit farther, but I am glad, really glad to see them. Uh, I would suggest that in addition to attestation, that you uh, do a temperature check at registration of each, uh, of each registrant, and that you also ask your registrants to submit uh, or bring with them evidence of a negative COVID test, a recent negative COVID test, like in that last uh, day or two. I think that would go far to alleviating everyone's worries. And I hope the ride is a big success. Thank you. Oh, I was muted. Um, thank you, Suki and Scott. Farmer. Okay, uh, I'm Scott Farmer. I'm a member of a rep of the um, Coast Mac and also uh, on the Land Use Committee for the Coast. When we formed this um, system to do this, it, it was initiated by a marathon that was very impactful and we sought to get community input. And really the design was to, to invite the uh, applicants in to, to explain what's, what it is and to give comment from the community. And I believe really with an a, a, a eye to uh, improving the relationship over years to make the events fit better the community and the community to accept it by, by working through the rough spots and giving feedback. And um, where there are bad actors, being able to comment about it and, and become part of a file so that future applications would be affected. So the incentive is to, to get better and better as a community. One way of, um, uh, so um, let me be specific about this race. Um, in uh, Cruise Ranch Road is, is a great place to rise to the ridge. It's built for a stagecoach, and um, but it is a county dirt road that's one lane with two-way traffic and very curvy. And uh, I hear that it's a time segment. And um, the the locals will, um, without the signage, they won't know that it's happening. And if they head down that four miles, they're going to just get stuck. And so. I suggest that um, at the, each end of Cruz Ranch Road for the week prior that a sign be put up that there's going to be bicycle race on this segment. So people will um, be able to anticipate it and avoid it. People commute, believe it or not, it's, it's one of, the, uh, we have very few roads and it's one of the ones we can get from the ridge to the coast. Mm -hmm. And if people know there's gonna be traffic, um, They'll, they'll work around it. And so um, I encourage signs at each end of that road. Um, we'll see how the bathrooms go. The one at the store is, is probably closed uh, unless you talk to the uh, restaurateurs to make special arrangements. Um, there's another one at the base of Cruz Ranch Road, which has been closed for a number of years. Maybe state parks will open it. Um, but I, I'm, um, it is, a public space, the roads. And um, I, 
uh, and it is ministerial, but we need to build a better relationship by finding cooperation and listening to each other. And um, I'll leave it there. Thank you. Thank you, Scott. Can I speak to that? We Austin talked about something. I, I do put choroplast signs out on non-county uh, poles uh, a week in advance, telling people that there's going to be a bicycle ride. So I've often put them uh, several. Uh, there'll be one on each kind of coming and going from each county road. And I know the way that people drive out there. So certainly there'll be there'll be warning. But thank you for for bringing that up. Thank you. All right, I don't um, see any other questions. There was a question from Lisa, who's on the Russian River Mac. So I'll ask the, uh, Miguel and Austin to take a look at that. And she's given you her um, email address that you can answer her question um, as she's not uh, um, permitted to speak today. Um, are there any other comments, questions? I don't see any hands raised or any other questions in the question and answer section. If not, I'm gonna thank Miguel and Austin at the last minute for agreeing to come and hearing us and working with the community. It's about building bridges and working together um, to make everything successful and to be able, I, I thank you for, um, you know, giving some donations to local firefighting um, causes. Um, that's always um, something that we welcome in our communities. Um, and I think we're just trying to get better communication between event planners and our communities. So they know what we, it, it, I think oftentimes we don't mind that you're doing it. It's that we take into consideration the safety and concern of everybody. So thank you so much. Yeah, well said. And we appreciate the opportunity to be here. So thanks for the work you all do. Thanks for having us. Thank you. All right, I'm going to move us along to the next agenda item. I do want to say that we did get, um, we got a couple things right at the last minute. And um, if we don't cover them today, um, we can bring them to the Lower Russian River Mac um, or back to another meeting if it's, um, in time. I don't have all the information on the Grand Fondo. Um, do we want to spend any time on that item? I, I don't think that we can discuss it because we don't really have anything in front of us. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I don't, we need to permit stuff yet. And I don't see anybody here from the organization if we even had questions. So I don't see that there's a usefulness in bringing this up at this point. So it's happening in April. Well, perhaps just sharing the date. Yes, April 23rd is the date of it. We will have a land use committee in March. So we may have an opportunity then to have information in front of us and comments and possibly bring the organizers if we need to do so. Um, one of the things that we got at the last minute was about um, some helicopter tours going to Johnson's Beach. And I just wanna say that that's probably something we wouldn't talk about in land use because we don't have anything to say usually about helicopters or speedboats or stuff like that, but um, we can certainly bring it to the Lower Russian River Mac or certainly take it up with the authorities. <laughs> I don't know about tours landing on Johnson's Beach. That sounds a little not so good. Um, I can provide some information on that if you want to. Who was that? Is that Elise? Elise. Oh yes, go ahead. The uh, FAA is in charge of all of all air traffic, and the county does not have any role in that. Yeah, that's right. uh, uh, taking off and landing has to be from licensed uh, helipads or airports, so nothing is going to be going or coming from Johnson's Beach. I'm glad to hear that. All right, so um, permits and projects of interest B, item B, UPE 22-003. Um, this is for Rio Nido. There was a permit planner, Jen Chard, um, who I was unable to get a hold of, but the permit, um, the permit is asking to operate a 7,300 square foot outdoor market adjacent to an existing 460 square foot general store and 37 space surface parking lot 
on a 1.29 acre parcel zoned LC. The proposed outdoor market will include tents and tables for vendors who will operate two days a week in Rio Nido. So I'm thinking that's in front of um, the roadhouse there. I don't have any other information other than what was specified in the permit. Um, are there any questions of our land use? I, Nick, do you have a question or comment? I do. I took a good close look at this and I don't believe the traffic uh, studies or their claims that they don't need to do them are valid. Um, if you look at the number of people that they're proposing, it's really they're, they're estimating for the number of people, they're estimating five people per car trip that they're factoring in. And we know that that's just not how people travel. And uh, the intersection at you know, Rio Nido Road and 116 and Willow, that is a nightmare on the best of days. And um, I really think we need to have a closer look at the impact of, you know, upwards of another, you know, 100 to 150 vehicles, not including the vendors and setup staff uh, going through this intersection on a, on a weekend. Did it? Um, I don't remember I, when I read through the permit, did it say what days? They just said two days a week, but I don't remember if they- um, I, pull, I can pull it up here. I've got it in my file. I um, Just a comment from myself. I too am concerned about the traffic congestion turning off of River Road, turning off and coming back in to River Road and the traffic congestion in that area. Coming back in is more critical than turning off. And uh, you know, I mirror my my comments would pretty much mirror Nick's uh, comments. So, I, I think we need some more information, and uh, we need to study this a little bit more. Yeah, it's uh, two days a week. Uh, it looks like it's going to be Saturday and Sunday. It's a weekend event, and uh, eight a.m. to 10, wait, is that eight a.m. to ten p.m.? Eight eight a.m. to ten p.m. Which I yeah, found kind of strange. So, all right, let's see. Um, we, we have any comments in no questions in the question and answer section. We do have any other comments from Nick or Mike? Then let's to me, we can open it up for uh, public comment. I'll open it up for public comment. It's like we have John Uniac. Mary? I can't, I can't uh, unmute him. I think Elise has to do it. Oh. I'm not a, I'm not a host. Good to know. I thought you were a host. Sorry. I've uh, allowed him to talk. John? Okay. Thank you very much for getting it together and let me speak. Uh, this permit, by the way, is 32 pages, and you've got two pages or so up there. There's at least 15 pages of relevant information on this. Uh, most of it is a lot of it about coding and what the land use is and everything. Every other area around there, their, their land use is recreation visitors serving commercial. And these two are limited commercial, which allow all kinds of stuff to go on that isn't relevant to the community, like heavy equipment use and uh, big sales of equipment. They could probably be a, a used car lot there two days a week for all I know. Uh, there's a lot of convolution in who owns what and who's permitting what and who is this person signing the actual deal to do this. It's not the owner of the lodge. There's a lot of LLC information in there if you want to look at it and take a look. The most part I have a problem with the way they word things like narrow intermittent stream, which is the main collection of Canyon 1, Canyon 2, Canyon 3 creeks going out under the river. And there's a whole bunch of county information on that going back to the landslide. 
but it's one hell of a lot of water. And it's probably four to six feet wide, you know, and, and quite deep. Uh, they're also saying they're gonna save the 32 redwood trees. Uh, that takes a lot of land to preserve all those redwood trees. Uh, they say they have 37 parking spaces, but like you mentioned, they say they're gonna have 35 truck trips per day, 35 truck, truck trips for people bringing their, whatever wares they're bringing in, at least no parking for anybody else. They also state in their document, 82 trips per hour during seven to 9 a.m. and four to 6 p.m. You know, there's just no way that Rio Nido can handle that kind of traffic. And also doing it the same day that the Roadhouse is doing their music events, it's just gonna be a chaotic set. So uh, there's no much of me talking about it anymore because there's nobody here to listen to me, but I will be talking at the Friends of Rio Nido meeting on Sunday if they show up for that one. So thanks for your interest in it. You'll probably see it again. All right, thank you, John. Mm -hmm. Um, I do notice that there's some other uh, comments that came in in the Q&A. Um, Woody Hastings says, to be sure of my com to be sure some of my comments and questions are on the record, I'm going to type them here. I need to leave the meeting at 7 p.m. The item I want to comment on is... I've allowed him to talk. Oh, okay, good. We're not on that subject. Um, yeah, no, I know. I didn't... Hi, this is Woody. Can you hear me? Hi, Woody. Okay. Hi. No, um, this is for item two. Uh, so we're not there yet. So I didn't mean to inter interrupt the flow of the meeting. Sorry. Okay, we'll come back to you. Right. Great. Thank you. Um, let's see. I thought I had seen somebody else had made a comment, but it looks. Oh, Daniela Cohen. I'm a Rio Nido resident, and I think this might be the new owners of the Rio Nido Lodge wanting to do this event, not the Roadhouse, not 100% though. Okay. All right. Are there any other questions or comments about the Rio Nido outdoor market, vendor fair, whatever it's supposed to be? I was unclear because. At first, I thought it was a farmer's market, and then it looked like more of a vendor um, fair, maybe food trucks. I'm, I'm not quite sure, but... Um, it looks more swap meat swap. Than, than farmer's market from my reading. You know, could, I bet, you know, I'm just reading what's written there. There may be other intentions. Yeah. yeah. I, I basically had the same thought. All right, I'm going to move us along. We have updates on all the permits and projects of interest. Um, looking for my Mary, can you put up on the board that uh, on the screen the um, Excel document that I had? Do you have it available? I do. Let's see. What can I do? Oops. So what I've done, because I'm neurotic sometimes, is that I just did an Excel spreadsheet and put all the updates to all the projects that we've been tracking just so that I can keep them in sync and in order and organized. And so we'll, we'll share that. Okay, can you see my screen? Yeah. Um, any chance you can make it a little bit bigger? Um, okay. Can we get a hard copy of this emailed out to us? I can do that. We can make it available in the notes. To make it bigger. The documents of the minutes as well. In the lower right, there's a little toggle bar where you can go up to, you can hit the plus sign and it gets bigger up to 100% in the lower right of the actual uh, spreadsheet, lower right. Uh, well, maybe it's the lower left. There you go. That's the little place where you Thank you. There you go. You said that. There you go. Much better. At least now I can read it. Okay. So let's start with. <laughs> you're, you're good right there. Forestville Park. 
It's right, huh? I'm going to move down to the gas station because it okay. starts with Forest Hill Park. Yeah. MD Gas Station, PLP 19 0018. The update for 121 that I was able to get is there are a number of items to be addressed before it can move forward. The first design review meeting was done early last year and we also had that design presented to the community at a MAC meeting where there were many public comments taken. Since then, the applicant has made significant revisions based on that feedback. There will be a second design review committee in the next two months Oh, I updated it. It's actually been um, scheduled now for, Eric says, the light, there's some preliminary lighting plans that the D DRC will be reviewing my, mid next month, tentatively scheduled for February 16th. Please note that I intend to direct the DRC's specific attention towards addressing lighting details for the proposed gas station canopy and exploring design opportunities for minimizing potential glare impacts as much as possible. Good luck with your meeting tomorrow. Should there be anything discussed that you feel important to share, please follow up with me. So he's very interested in any of our comments that we have about the MD gas station. Um, yeah, and then, I mean, there's gonna be, there's maybe another design meeting and hearing, but the next one coming up is um, tentatively scheduled for the 16th, which will be publicly noticed. It'll come out by February 4th. So I'll open it up to the land use committee members with any comments or questions. I don't have any comments at this time. Nick? Nor I, although I will be interested when we get to the environmental review, environmental impact of this process. But at this point, everything is going according to plan or according to their plans. And, um, you know, they responded to our requests. So yay us. I mean, we, we, you know, we're having an impact for listening to us. So I think that's a good thing. And we ought to just continue monitoring and see what happens. All right. Um, are there any... Um, Woody, was this something you wanted to talk about? Yes, thank you. I was waiting to hear, does anyone from the public have a comment? So yes, thank you. Um, can, can folks hear me? Yes. Oh, good. Okay. Um, so first, you, you just said the 16th. Is that 16th of February, 16th of March? 16th of February. Is oh, wow. Okay, design review. Um, first, you know, um, thank you for the opportunity to comment. Uh, my name is Woody Hastings. I'm representing myself and, and also the coalition uh, opposing new gas stations. And I guess I've been asleep at the switch. That I, you know, this project only came to my attention recently, um, and so it appears that I've missed some public review and design review and things like that. So getting up to speed here, and I do appreciate, you know, in reviewing the the the. Uh, the report that was in the in the agenda, you know, some of the efforts. Um, sure, some of them are the results of changes suggested by um, your your body and 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 the community. And and some of the stuff looks really good. And I'm glad there's EV charging in there. I'm just wondering if the applicant uh, and and the planners have considered um, just not rebuilding the gas station. Uh, you know, it, it it could be a better investment for the community and actually a better business investment. Um, given uh, that uh, you know gasoline sales in the state of California have been flat for the last 10 years, practical and affordable electric vehicles are on the rise, um, and the state policies are on a trajectory for decarbonization. So uh, the thought of just doing all these other things, you know, the, the, the convenience store uh, and, and uh, you know, other, uh, the residential units and all that, but just having electric vehicle charging, which will be increasing in usage uh, and not including the, uh, the gas station. And part of the reason for not including the gas station is the underground storage tanks. And you know, there's, there's sort of this um, um, case in point about the problematic nature of these underground tanks 
and it's and it's mentioned there, you know, that they need to figure out a way to deal with the removal and of possible contaminated soil. And so that will be something that, you know, at some point in the probably not too distant future, that same problem will be uh, before uh, folks to remove tanks that might be installed if this project is improved. Um, and I'm wondering if the consideration of above ground tanks has been taken into consideration because these things are designed to last for like 40 years and they almost always leak anyway, no matter how much double haul and monitoring and stuff they leak. Uh, and so, and they're probably gonna need to be removed earlier than 40 years. So above ground tanks might be a better way to go. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, sure. I bust them open with a car wreck and the bamboo. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, so um, I also want to uh, say that. Uh, okay, I'm at that point. There's a there's a point in the in the in the report where it states uh, something to the effect of to to reopen uh, tanks and updated, and then there seems to be a missing word. There's some kind of um, something that's required to be upgraded. It's right in the overview, right in the beginning. And I'm not clear on what that is that needs to be Thanks. Gotta updated. Good. Yeah, and one last point, and then I'm done. Thank you. Which is that it states in there that there, are, there in the, when the gas station was open, open previously, there are about 250 visitors a day. Um, I think it would be helpful helpful to know how many of those visitors are actually purchasing gasoline. Um, and how many, you know, what's the breakdown between gasoline and just convenience store visits? Um, so I think that's everything I wanted to touch on. Thank you. Kyra, you're on mute. I thought I unmuted myself. Okay. Um, I'm looking, I don't see anything else in the question and Q&A section. Any other comments regarding the gas station? I think we will see um, some more information coming out in the environmental reviews uh, specific to some of the tank issues in question. So more to come on that. Okay, I'm gonna move us to PLP 16-0054. Um, the down the park in downtown Forestville. I know that um, Vesta is kind of the contact person for that, and there was supposed to be a meeting in Forestville yesterday, but I think it's being rescheduled. Um, the update that I have to that um, from the planner says the applicant has submitted a revised design due to the discovery of wetlands on the property. There are road improvements proposed along the frontage of the Forestville Park that require coordination with Sonoma County Department of Transportation and Public Works, who is handling the road improvements for Caltrans. And then I mentioned there was supposed to be a meeting yesterday, um, but it's being rescheduled. And I think that's it. Any comments or questions from our land use members? No comment as far as I'm concerned. I got nothing. All right, so I would advise people that are interested in this to um, um, keep in contact with Vesta and there'll probably be a, a Forestville meeting that will be rescheduled soon. Uh, let me see if there are comments. It looks like March will be the meeting. All right, I think that's it for that one. Let's move on to PLP 21-0020, the food truck. Um, project, wh wh where's the food truck, Mary? Is that it right there? That's lock project. Uh Tyra, when when we spoke about this, uh, there wasn't anything new from November when when oh. it was first brought up, and it wasn't going to be uh, so. There's not no follow up here available. Yeah, and I did speak with the planner who said that they are ensuring that the lighting is going to be downcast, and definitely that they're going to be addressing 
um, the uh, grease trap to make sure that that's done in a timely manner and, and addressed. Okay, I don't think there was much, any questions about that? The food truck issue PLP 21-0020 from Nick or Mike? No comment. Nothing for me. All right. Um, I don't see any other comments out in the public or any hands raised. Let's moving on to PLP 18-0012, the Lock Hotel project, Fernwood Park development. Um, so the hearing, according to Georgia, the uh, Board of Zoning has tentatively rescheduled the meeting for February 24th. I would advise anybody interested to attend that and make their comments known. And that's all that we have for an update for that. Nick or Mike, do you have any comments, concerns? No comments, just that uh, that will be a public no, publicly noticed meeting and we urge that all people that do have concerns express their concerns at that particular BZO meeting. Absolutely. I I like that. All right. Chair? Yes? Uh, I'll just say that the, uh, the planner's name is Georgia McDaniel. It's listed as McDonald with the question. It's Georgia McDaniel oh, for anybody who may be wanting to follow up with her. Yes, it is McDaniel. I changed that on all my documents. Thank you. There's another version of this document that it did get changed on, but that, that's this is the one that I sent you originally. My apologies. Um, and UPE 21-0056 Timberland conversion. I don't think there's anything new there. Uh, uh, yeah, you just passed it. Where? I just saw it. Nope. You only have four items on this and rezoning wasn't supposed to be on here. This is the this is the earlier version. Okay, I have a Timberland conversion update. Oops, let me just get rid of this screen. <laughs> the record has been void due to the need to deal with a settlement agreement as a result of an abatement hearing. So that is what Marina had told me. Um, I'm getting back to my Zoom. I read it off of my document. Um, Mary, can you just scooch up a little bit on the Excel document? You see, I just saw a Timberland conversion go past me on the screen. There we go. Line 13, 12, line 12. <laughs> it's a tricky, stupid document. There it is. Oh. Oh. Right there. Nope. Oh, well. I, I read you what the update was anyway. So let me just say, hang on just a minute. I'm gonna read what we had before, just so that we're up to date on it. So the previously the project was stalled for now, application was submitted prematurely. You must fit first secure a zoning permit for a minor timberland conversion to address illegal tree removal. To date, prior to seeking additional entitlement, specifically a use permit for a major timberland conversion and proposed cannabis use. As you're aware, code enforcement action has been taken place on the subject property guards to removal of three acres of timberland without proper permits. An abatement hearing took place on January 26 of 2018, followed by a settlement agreement executed on June 15th of 2021. Um, it's my understanding that they're working um, um, to rectify this but the last update that Marina gave me, which was two days ago, she stated the record has been void due to the need to deal with the settlement agreement as a result of the abatement hearing. 
So that's all I have on that. Are there any questions or comments from Nick and or Mike? Nick? Um, my question is, so what we're saying is that basically they are going to have to refile in order for this permit to go through. So this is this particular instance of this project is dead and we'll have to wait and see if it comes back in another form. That's my understanding. Therefore, I have no comment. Um, any other comments or questions, Nick and Mike? No comment. From Let's me. see if there's anything. I, um, Vesta will address your comments at the MAC meeting. Sorry. Okay. Was there anything else that I have? I don't see anything else on the agenda. Any other concerns or comments? Nick or Mike? Not at this time. So I think for next agendas, we'll look at the Grand Fondo. There was information about it in our packet, but maybe we'll kind of focus on it a little bit more directly. Everybody can, everybody can look in the packet and um, review it and be ready for comments next meeting. Anything else? Yeah, um, I noticed, I know at our last meeting, I requested that Tim Miller, you know, try to make another uh, appearance here i don't know where that is but i am still and i have several other constituents folks in my neighborhood are very interested in that conversation he's reached out to me and wants to do it privately i would rather have this in a public forum and be able to have other folks participate as well so mary maybe you and i can reach out to him i did read that in the minutes as i was going through them um this morning and, and i made note of that as well nick yeah, I'll make sure that it's on on the the trial agenda that we sent that you and I deal with at the beginning. Um, I did do when I uh, regarding the uh, the timberland conversion when I put it back to the original size. There, you can now read it on the screen if you have really good eyes. That's all right. I'm sorry. It's kind of a wild document. Okay. And then you want this attached to the minutes? Is that correct? Yes, please. I think okay. it's good for everybody to see. Kind of a history of what we've reviewed i mean it'll eventually get pretty pretty long maybe we'll just do it each year or something but i i like that we have you know dates of updates and what's going on so we have a trail to follow of each of the permits that we've reviewed or keep track of all right and let's see are there any q and a's anything from the public I do not see anything. All right, I wanna thank everybody for their participation. And if there aren't any hands, which I see no hands raised, I will um, ask for a motion to, uh, to adjourn our meeting. Um, <laughs> okay, uh, roll call vote to adjourn. Mike, are you in favor? Yes. Nick, are you in favor? Aye. Chair Wink, are you in favor? Yes, I am. And that Thank passes unanimously. Have a wonderful evening. Yeah, you too.